I'm Igor Kfetz, and this is The List Building Lifestyle, a podcast for those who want to build a large profitable email list and make six figures from anywhere in the world. If you would like to get rich by building a large email list while helping people, this podcast is for you. I also invite you to attend a free web class I'm conducting this week to find out how I built a list of 4,331,656 email subscribers at a profit. Secure your free seat at igor.cx. Attend this free workshop to discover an easy way to get 50 to 500 new email leads per day on complete autopilot without losing tons of money. Just go to igor.cx to attend this free web class. And now, once again, it's time to claim your list building lifestyle. Welcome back to another edition of the list building lifestyle with your host, Igor Kfetz. So you've probably been trying to make money online for a little time and you've probably been thinking, man, what, what's the traffic source should I be using? And eventually, if you're listening to this podcast and you know who I am, you've probably come across solo ads, but you've probably also been bombarded with emails and products and offers and trainings and Facebook lives and YouTube streams about Facebook ads, you know, saying that, you know, people are making a crazy amount of money on Facebook ads, be it by promoting products or building their lists or maybe even running Facebook ads for other businesses, mostly offline um, and not so much online because anyone who runs an online business can probably run their own damn Facebook ads, right? Well, this episode is all about uh, kind of comparing these two head to head and finding out which one is the best for you. Now, if you've been listening to the show, you know that I'm anti Facebook and I'm anti Facebook ads, and uh, I will do my best to <laughs> to kind of create uh, this unbiased matchup here. But I will tell you up front, we'll give it away up front. Facebook ads chances of winning this head to head are basically slim to none because you know, there's so many different flaws about Facebook and, you know, I'm really struggling to find any advantages besides it being, you know, kind of big. Now, that actually being the first downside of Facebook, that it's way too big and there's way too many people competing for that limited ad space. Therefore, you're now paying a ridiculously inflated price for the privilege of showing your ads on the newsfeed and on the right sidebar and in the apps and, and so on and so forth. In fact, this year alone, I think in the last uh, four months or so, Facebook have uh, made a few changes to the algorithm, realizing that they ran out of space. And as a result, they jacked up the prices where, you know, the cost per sale pretty much doubled for most people I know. In fact, uh, a little while ago, Mike Dillard sent out an email saying he's discontinuing the um, the challenge, right? So uh, when you buy one of Mike Dillard's uh, products, I don't remember which one, he said as soon as you implement it and you send him proof that you did, he actually going to refund your money. And so he discontinued that challenge because Facebook ad cost uh, went up and uh, his uh, cost per sale went from $400 to about $800, which means, you know, doing that was no longer profitable. So you know, obviously that's only one example and most people wouldn't even like talk about their losses. I mean, everybody online loves talking about their wins, but nobody talks about their losses and failures. But I assure you, all of a sudden there's fewer Facebook gurus and there's fewer people who are able to legitimately make money in the big niches. Now, I will tell you this. I will admit that Facebook is still pretty cool for a bunch of different niches. For example, the food niche. So I've been to this uh, event here in Toronto on traffic generation. And uh, there was this guy, I think his name is Ryan Skelly. Now, Ryan uh, runs ads for this company called Smart Food or Eat Smart or something like that. Basically, they sell healthy cookies or healthy uh, waffles or, you know, basically guilt foods. They're actually healthy for you. And he's spending for that company about $30,000 a day on Facebook. And that's awesome. Now, I don't know how all the case study uh, that he showed actually was, but I can tell you that they're doing a lot of work and, you know, he's actually, you know, doing it full time because you literally have to sit there and refresh the page and switch, you know, the freaking ad swipe every 20 seconds for that thing to work with that budget. Now, that is probably the only time I've seen someone winning with Facebook ads. The other time, of course, is people selling Facebook ads advice. 
right so if you're an offline business owner and all of a sudden you get like an ad about a like a facebook ad agency that's probably going to work uh, just like on instagram a lot of people who make money on instagram are the ones who actually teach you how to make money on instagram right or people basically who want to uh, show off their bikinis or whatever right so again i'm not a big fan of that sort of marketing i want predictable i want measurable marketing i want something that's scalable i want something that's affordable I want something you can actually build a business around. So, you know, for me, Facebook ads is really, well, challenging in that department. And, and not just because of the click prices going up and the lead prices going up, but also because it's very complicated. I mean, let's face it, there's like 12 different types of ads on Facebook right now, including Instagram. And Instagram has two or three types now. It's just nuts. I mean, how can how are you supposed to figure it out? Honestly, if you're a business owner and you're like you're in the day to day, just running your business like that means you'll need to take a whole week off work just to figure that stuff out or come on and, you know, bring an agency that's going to charge you a five thousand dollar setup fee and 30% and of your ad budget just to run your ads for you with your money, by the way. Right. Uh, so that kind of makes no sense. But uh, Facebook is really complicated, like they're, they're really complex. Uh, I spent about 30 grand uh, last year on Facebook ads trying to build a campaign for uh, for my traffic business. And it, it's been probably the, the least rewarding thing I've done. The least rewarding thing I've done. Uh, on the contrary, when I just run some ads to targeted lists, right, when I just run my offer to lists that I know are within that niche, the response is so much greater. I'm, I'm literally able to walk away with 15 new sales in a week without touching my computer, without doing anything that even resembles manual labor, it's simply because I dropped a promo to the right list. And guess what? I'm actually able to turn a profit immediately, unlike with Facebook ads where, you know, uh, the last I checked, my lead costs were roughly $12 a lead, like single opt-in email lead. Now, maybe I was doing it wrong. I admit, you know, I'm, uh, maybe I'm not smart enough for Facebook ads, even though I've been marketing online for 10 years. But, you know, with solo ads, I can probably get leads at, you know, one sixth of the price, maybe one fifth of the price. I mean, it really depends on the offer. But with solo ads, it's so much easier. It's so much cheaper. It's uh, the response is so much greater. I mean, you ever tried driving traffic from Facebook? You probably know that the email open rates as soon as you get people on your list are just nuts. Well, in a bad way, nuts in a bad way. Uh, they're just super low. The email open rates you get from a Facebook ad subscriber are virtually non-existent. Now, if you're getting somebody who's already preconditioned to open emails because that's what they do, then you will always make more money simply because your effort will produce a higher ROI. Like these people will open more often, click more often and buy more often. And of course, there's been many, many studies proving that email is just overall more profitable than social media because email subscribers actually buy things. Again, imagine like this is my, my most favorite metaphor when it comes to social media. Imagine you have a jewelry store and you're getting social traffic. So basically what happens is you're getting a lot of people to come into the store liking your jewelry. They're basically telling you, oh, I like this. I like this. I like this, but not buying and leaving. And when you drive email traffic, what happens, you basically got less traffic coming in but that traffic is very targeted and so when they come in they actually buy something from you and walk away with the jewelry in hand while you have money in hand now if you want to run a profitable business that's what you need you can be building your business on a customer base that's ref there that's that refuses to buy from you it's just impossible the mathematics the money math will not work in your favor and you will quickly run out of money so the only way to do that is to get people who actually want to spend money with you now, the closest thing I've seen to making Facebook ads work was uh, getting people to a webinar. Now, this is good because the webinar is actually another big commitment. And if so, if they've committed to you to a point of a webinar, probably we can you know, assume they're going to open your emails as well. So if you want to make Facebook ads work, first off, make sure you drive them to a webinar. Second, make sure you sell something really expensive because you'll be operating on a very low response rate and you'll need to break even using one or two sales at best. OK, on a, on a like a whole campaign. So you better be selling something high ticket allowing you to reinvest all that money right back into more advertising because you'll be probably generating customers at a loss, allowing you to recoup more money down the road. The other thing you want to make sure you have with Facebook ads is upsells. 
you know, upsells are critical here. Like if you don't have upsells, you will probably walk away with half the money you could be making. And, and that's a shame. And if I were you, if you're really insistent on doing Facebook ads, I would probably I would probably compete for the newsfeed space and not any of the other spaces. Like in my testing that I've done, the only effective Facebook media that I've seen, like even just something that that even resembles effectiveness is the newsfeed. You know, people who click on your ads in the newsfeed are a little bit better, are a little bit more likely to act. Now, I will share this about Facebook ads. Facebook is really cool for video ads. Uh, so if you're looking to just spread the word or build a brand uh, or, you know, kind of uh, create some buzz around your company in your industry, you know, video ads are probably going to be a good solution for you. Not to mention that Facebook allows you to uh, track who watched how much, like, what part of your video and so you can then create an audience with the people who watch three or ten seconds of your video or 25 percent of your video and that would be a really cool audience for you to test now what's going to happen is though you're going to be willing to spend a lot of money just to build an audience like basically to build an audience on facebook now in, in my opinion that's not the best use of my money. If I'm building an audience, I want to control the media I want to I want it to have uh, I want it to be maybe a podcast or an email or a webinar like I want to be in control of the media on Facebook I'm never in control and that sucks because you know Facebook can easily easily shut you down and then you're left without an audience that you've been building it happened to me several times before right Facebook can just decide one day that they don't want to promote your type of product anymore it happened to me and a bunch of my friends too so this past year uh, they kind of went back on crypto right they said okay you know what guys crypto is a scam we don't want to we don't want crypto showing up on your newsfeed so i i've known people who've been running facebook ads for years guys who were like dropping 20 grand uh like every single month on facebook ads and just got shut down overnight no prior notice no second chances nothing just shut down and out why because facebook changed their policies overnight and decided not to tell you and not to give you like a head notice saying hey any crypto offers will be taken off the network and so you better do it right now or you're you'll lose your account no they just kind of cut you off why would you do that that's just not cool and um, of course let's not forget that you know the tracking part of it too as far as tracking it is very it's just superior to pretty much anything out there because of their smart pixel but it's also crazy difficult to manage all that for example going back to that campaign uh, breakdown that i've seen at that seminar they were actually driving a lot of traffic using videos then retargeting people then you know targeting the ones who visited the order form and targeted the ones who visited the page before the order form and the ones who spend you know at least 60 seconds on the order form but then buy and so on and so forth like so out of one campaign they built like a million different campaigns just to optimize everything about it right and and this is the kind of stuff that you think it'd be like okay well that's when you want to create something great but what i learned is that no that's actually something you just need by default to be able to make any money at all yo it's igor if you're loving the content hop on over to lizbillinglifestyleshow.com for more free training and a free transcript of this episode oh and i'd really appreciate if you logged into itunes and rated the show it really helps thanks if you're willing to sort of just give up about a week or a month of your life to try and figure out facebook ads you can try and do that but again make sure you have something expensive to sell you've got a deep funnel with multiple offers and you definitely be ready with a kick-ass webinar because without one i don't see how this can work especially again remember you are taking people out of a social mindset and you're trying to get them to give you money a social mindset is is basically like this new phenomenon where people get on social media to avoid making decisions people uh, who go there basically decompress it's kind of like you know it's the same mindset as watching netflix it's like it's 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 mashed potato mindset and so you know how do you get someone with that mindset to to buy from you well the first thing you need to do is you need to take them away from facebook and away from that mindset and put them into an engaged 
mindset that wants to learn. For example, this is why seminars, for example, are, are such a great marketing tool for any company. This is why, you know, companies like ClickFunnels and, and uh, Laser Kennedy Inner Circle, you know, can do one event a year and walk away with millions and millions and millions of dollars in sales, even though their members have already been spending money with them. It's simply because they put them in an environment where people come in engaged and they come in to learn. There's no windows in the room, you know, uh, the attention is on the speaker and people come there knowing that they are there to take action, to learn, to get new ideas, to buy something. And as a result, by simply putting people in that state, you always end up making way more money, sometimes doubling, tripling, quadrupling, or 10xing your uh, annual revenue. So with Facebook, is like the exact opposite is going on. Like they're going to Facebook not to make decisions. They're they're basically running away from decision making. They they just want to decompress. So you need to take them out of Facebook and into some kind of a some kind of a educational environment. My recommendation is webinars. Webinars are probably the best chance you have um, on Facebook in order to make it work. Period. With that said, how about solo ads? I mean. I'd be silly to say that solids have no downsides or anything like that, but they definitely have more upsides in my opinion than Facebook. Well, for example, solo ads are way better as a traffic source for you if you're selling mainstream stuff. So think weight loss, self-help, financial, all of that stuff, all these industries are, are built on lists. They're built on email marketing. They've been built on email marketing for a long time and they will continue to be built upon those upon that one principle because that's the media that's most profitable and now you know since these industries have been growing and growing and growing over the years you can instantly tap like millions upon millions upon millions of people who are already been targeted they've been qualified they raised their hand they purchased something that relates to what you're selling etc so you can easily be generating thousands of new leads each and every single day if you simply know which lists to tap. And the other part I love about Solo is that you really don't need to be a super advanced uh, tracker or super advanced technical, technical person, because all you need to do is just find the right list, which means you need to be a relationship builder. You need to you know, find out who has the best list. You need to find the right you know, list brokers and GV brokers. You have to you know, learn how to communicate and how to present your offer to people and you know, get them to promote it, sure. But in addition to that, you really don't need to be super technical. I've seen people making quite literally millions of dollars a year being very dysfunctional. Like this, this is amazing. Like they're so dysfunctional, they can't be trusted, you know, to to wake up in the morning on their own. Like they're they're seriously in a bad shape. Yet they're able to take something as simple as solo ads and build one offer, and bam, they're making millions of dollars. I know, I know one guy. Who's actually not dysfunctional at all? He's actually pretty pretty functional, but you know he's not a hard worker, and he developed one offer and he ran it exclusively with other people's lists. So he would approach people and get them to mail the offer, and he did it for uh, three years, and he made five million dollars with one offer and no upsells. It was just nuts, and it's only possible with solo it's like it's it's truly impossible with any other media because if you try to do it with banner ads which you quickly discover is that the response rate is crap if you try to do it with facebook ads you, you quickly run out of money if you try to put your weight loss offer on google well good luck with that you're gonna be paying like 20 20 bucks a click or something because google's been you know getting super super expensive we're probably going to cover uh google adwords in a different episode here so stay tuned for that um another thing you want to remember when it comes to solo ads is that solo ads are just way more responsive. I mean, these people have been qualified to buy from you. These people have been known to say yes to products that you're already promoting. These people are like the the cherry, the cherry picked prospect, the best one you can possibly hope to get. And it takes less effort and less hassle and less technical skills to get them and less money too. Um, I mean, it, it could be overlooked, but it's actually way cheaper to run solo ads to the right lists 
for, for two reasons. First off, the price itself. The price per click or the price per lead or, or the price per email drop is going to be lower than running the equal amount of traffic from Facebook, where it's actually a lot of times it's a gamble too, because on Facebook, uh, you, you never know how many clicks you're going to get. You get charged per impression, right? So if you don't get that one right, you can probably run millions of impressions, but only get so many clicks and therefore end up paying a lot. And, and the other reason why, why solo ads are way more profitable to run is quite simply because you make more money. With solo ads, with the exact same amount of traffic, the output is going to be way higher. So not only you're spending less, but you're making more. And if you're smart and you put in some upsells and, you know, do all that good stuff, you're probably going to walk away a wealthy person, probably going to build yourself a really nice business, which is very predictable too, very predictable. And this is the other thing I really love about solid traffic. Like as a father of two now, I've just had a baby boy come uh, literally a week ago. I really, I really value predictability. I hate ups and downs. I hate unpredictability. I hate surprises. I love it when the money comes in every day steadily and preferably for it to grow every day, right? And if not every day, then every month or if not every month, then every year. But I want that income to come in predictably knowing that I'm going to wake up tomorrow and it's not going to disappear. And that too, I've seen with people, uh, you know, both, by the way, both with solo ads and Facebook ads. And the, and the way it happens with solo ads is when people get lazy and stop buying ads, stop researching lists, and when they when their offer uh, runs, well, basically to its shelf life. Because as much as I hate to admit it, pretty much every offer in the marketplace, with a few exceptions, has a shelf life, unfortunately. And eventually, um, you know, you have to redevelop it. Now, when that happens, it's not that you have a bad product, you just need a different offer. That's the only thing like and this is something for you to really grasp uh, if you want to stay here for the long haul products or products like there's let's just say I'm selling this iPhone, right? But I can position the product in many different ways and I can offer the product and bundle it in different ways. So in terms of positioning, I can position it as a productivity tool, as a camera, as a phone, as a as a music listening device. I can I can do a lot of things with it like there's different angles to it, but I can also offer it in a certain way. I can offer it at full price. I can offer it at a discount. I can bundle, you know, AirPods with it. I can, you know, say buy the new iPhone X or whatever and get an iPad at 50% off. I can say that, you know, buy two iPhones and we'll donate, you know, five thousand dollars to charity, whatever. Like, so there's many different offers. So when your offer runs to shelf life, you can just reposition the offer and run those ads again to even the same list. And you start hitting different people again, truly, truly incredible. Like you can actually make a living consistently and predictably if you just find one list of, say, 100,000 people and just hit that list with the same product, but different positioning every single time. It's really, it's really crazy. So anyway, to sum up my verdict of Facebook ads versus solo ads is no surprise here. Solo ads win for me every time, unless, unless you're promoting some kind of food product, or maybe you're doing some local marketing. In that case, I'd probably stack up, stack Facebook ads versus maybe Google AdWords and see that. But if you're in the mainstream, if you're an information marketer, if you're a coach, if you're somebody who doesn't necessarily limit themselves uh, to their local environment to get clients, then solo ads are probably your easiest pick because they just give you access to millions upon millions of customers that are already primed to buy the products you're selling. So you can walk away from a promo with like a 12% conversion rather than with a 0.012% conversion like you would on Facebook ads. So with that said, uh, look into solids if you still haven't. And if you had, then make sure to go and check out my free training at igor.cx about how to make solids work for you, how to get email traffic to work for you in your business, how to break even, and how I used it actually to build a list of 4.3 million email subscribers. So check it out at igor.cx. And so this concludes this episode. Once again, the verdict is Facebook ads for me personally suck solo ads when okay so check out solo ads if you're doing any mainstream or big 
big market offers and if you don't if you're a local marketer maybe you're selling food you know like smart cookies and stuff like that then you know i guess you can stick to facebook ads but if that's the case then you know, I'd, I'd probably urge you to just get into info marketing instead. Anyway, this is Igor K. Fitz. Thank you so much for your time today. And until next time we chat, have a good one. Thank you for tuning in to the Liz Building Lifestyle. Get access to previous episodes, the transcript of today's show, and exclusive content at our website at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. Also, don't forget to claim your free seat at the traffic workshop I'm conducting this week, where I'm showing how I built a list of 4,331,656 email subscribers without losing money, and how my clients are putting anywhere from 50 to 500 new leads per day on their list at a profit without any list building experience. Just go to igor.cx to claim your free seat now.